Welcome to the Profile Corner. In the last video, we had some issues with routers. Uh, we had an issue with a Bosch palm router where the base collapsed on it. Even though the main lock was locked, there was a secondary lock on it, and that was not twisted into the correct position. Uh, we saw that in the slow motion video with the zoom in where I showed where the problem was at. I haven't had an issue with that router since then. We also had issues with the Bosch 1617 EVS plunge router that we used. That was this one here on your left, which was purchased at the end of December in 2024. The issue that I'm having with it is that the plunging mechanism is not smooth and sometimes it fools you into thinking that it's fully plunged and yet it's not and it won't move I had to move it off to the side and apply significant pressure to it on a couple occasions to get it to slide down to the locked position where it should be and then it doesn't always come back up smoothly as you can see it's kind of jumping around a little bit instead of rising smoothly and going down smoothly. So that's a problem that I'm having with this router. This other one I picked up used at a business closure auction. This one has a smooth plunging motion, which is nice. It's a little bit stiff, but it plunges smoothly. One thing I noticed with this in a previous video is that if I bring it all the way down and release the lever, it pops back up a little bit. I don't know exactly what's causing these two different issues. I did notice, however, that there's a couple slight differences between these routers, even though they're the same model. As you can see on this one, the lock lever is somewhat horizontal when it's fully locked. On this one, the lock lever is pretty much vertical when it's in the locked position. Another thing that I noticed is that this router here is rotated clockwise ever so slightly in the base, maybe about uh, oh a half inch or so. It's rotated this direction compared with this router over here. And I'm not sure if that's a design change that Bosch made to the routers or if there's something more to it. I'm guessing that this router, because it was used in a production environment in a business, it had probably fallen at least once, if not twice, from a table. This router here, the new one, has never fallen and never been abused or anything like that. This is the way it behaved directly out of the box, and I was hoping that it was going to get smoother in operation, but it has not yet. There it is. It's locked where it doesn't want to go down. And now if I apply significantly more pressure, it went down. And so I'm going to be looking at this particular problem today and seeing what I can find as the cause of these two issues. I looked online and some of the things that I've seen suggested is that if there's a binding in the plunge mechanism, that what you should do is you should put either white lithium grease on these rods down in, inside here, or you should put paste wax or spray silicone. I have all three of those here. I've got probably a 24 year old can of white grip white lithium grease which is no longer white in the, in the inside. I've got some paste wax that I used on the base of a router in the, one of the past videos and I also have some spray silicone which is essentially dry lubricant. You spray it and it comes out wet and then after a minute or two it becomes just a dry silicon lubricant. So I can try that. Another person had recommended using powdered graphite. I don't have any of that um, that I could test out, but I'm going to give these a shot and see what I can see. Uh, when I looked at this router, the older one, if I back these down, I was seeing 
quite a bit of dirt or uh, sawdust contamination up inside and I don't know if that has anything to do with it. I want to make sure that when I put lubricant on these rods that it doesn't affect the locking mechanism at all. And so I'm going to have to investigate to see how that locking mechanism works. Um, this router over here is new and there's no dirt or contamination of any sort up inside. So that's not causing the binding action. I, I did notice that on this, this router here, this plastic covering tends to bend, whereas this side over here does not. And I don't know if that's any kind of a indication of what's causing the binding. But uh, that's not the way a plunge router is supposed to work. My Bosch 1611 EVS router, which is almost 35 years old, does not have this problem. It will slightly release when it's uh, dropped all the way down, like this one's doing, but not, not anywhere near what this does. So I'm not sure exactly what's going on yet, but I'm going to investigate these and see what I can find. And then I'll report back in this video if I find anything that solves these particular problems. On the older router, I was able to pivot the motor in the base while I could not do that with a newer router plunge base. I noticed that uh, on the inside here, there's a little pin right down in this area here that is kind of backed out on the older plunge base. And you can see it's sticking out of the front right here. So uh, on the newer router, I see that the pin is still completely into the inside of the case here. And so what I may try to do is try to push that pin through on this older base so that at least the routers are in the same relative location uh, within the bases and that the motor is not able to spin within the base. That's not going to, of course, affect the plunging action that I'm having an issue with right now, but it is one thing that I had noticed. Okay, I've used a pair of channel locks to squeeze that pin back into the center on the older plunge base, and we'll see if that makes a difference. You can see here it's no longer on the outside of the case. Maybe now both of the routers will be in the same relative location within the case, and this router will not be able to spin around within. I've removed the screw in the end of the lever and uh, I think I can see how it is that this can be repositioned so that the, the lock lever in the fully locked position is in the same relative location on both of these routers. There's multiple grooves on the inside of this lever that would allow me to put it onto this nut in a different position and it's quite possible that this was uh, broken or uh, something of that sort by the previous owner and then when it was reattached it was reattached in the wrong position. So I'll make the, a change to this so that it matches the locking position of the other router and we'll see if that makes any difference in terms of how well it locks when it gets fully into the down position. Okay, here's an update on the older router. I have this lever now in the same location as the newer router when it's in the lock position. What I found is that there's a spring down in here, a spring arm that has to apply tension and it's right in here it requires more force to get that spring into the correct position up against this bar right here when that handle is in the non-vertical position like it was before. And so that's probably why it was still, um, why it was put in the wrong location is because it requires 
quite a bit of force. What I had to do is I had to leave this screw out as far as I could, and then I could force the wing of that spring up into this area here, and I could keep applying pressure to that uh, to the leg of the spring while I screwed in the screw right here, and uh, that. Uh, and then once I got uh, this, this screw in far enough where that wing of the spring could not escape out of there, then I could remove the flat blade screwdriver from back in there and then finish screwing this in. Now, the issue has become that this older router also binds when it goes up and down, whereas it did not do that before. So now this one, as you can see here, it stalls out going up and down and I'm wondering if I tight, tightened up the bolt that was inside there a little bit too much um, maybe that's what's causing it or maybe this had uh, this problem in the past also or maybe it'll loosen up now it's uh, behaving a little bit more like normal but it, it is still hanging up a little bit much like the newer router is doing, except that this one seems to be working perfectly now for some reason. And I'm not sure why that is. I have not applied any lubricant to the newer one, but I'll do that soon and see if that does anything for me. It is still occasionally binding. This one here now is quite stiff when it's going up and down, whereas before it was uh, quite fluid. And I'm thinking that it was quite fluid before because this lock was not applying enough pressure before. And now it's applying pretty much continuous pressure to some degree through the stroke. So I'll apply some lubricant to both of these and we'll see what, uh, what happens. The locking mechanism is essentially right behind this screw that's over here from what I can tell. So I'll, I'll apply a little bit of lubricant and we'll see what happens. I'm going to start out with some paste wax because that seems like that's the easiest to reverse. And uh, if that causes more problems than it's worth, then I'll take it off. And then I'll try something else. Uh, one other person had recommended using rubbing alcohol or denatured alcohol to try to clean things. I have some extremely strong denatured alcohol, so I may try that and see if cleaning things helps out and then I'll bring the camera back again and with another update okay so I've done a little bit of work to these I've cleaned the posts on the older plunge router using uh, this alcohol which is 99% I guess it's 99.9% .9 pure alcohol and then I applied paste wax onto the posts and it was still binding pretty badly after I had moved this lever into the correct position and what I noticed is that if I took a Phillips screwdriver and I tightened this screw down that holds this lever in place if I tighten it down as tight as I could get it suddenly the plunging mechanism works almost perfectly it still binds up ever so slightly at times coming back up but it's nowhere near as bad as it was after I moved this lever so seeing that that had such a positive impact that little screw I took a Phillips screwdriver to this screw tightened it down as far as I could and now the punch mechanism works so smoothly that it I can't believe that this is the same router I've also applied paste wax to the post in this router although it hasn't seemed to make any change to it it still gives me a little bit of an issue every now and then and it appears to be related to the boot that's over here on the side 
just on a quick observation when I can feel it giving me a lot of pressure I can see that this boot is kicking out and then as soon as it drops back into position it comes down smoothly again but uh, that's a world of difference so if you're seeing a similar problem with your Bosch 1617 EVS router where the plunging binds up going up and down probably the first thing I would do to check is whether or not this screw right here in the front is tightened down as much as you can tighten it using a number two Phillips screwdriver and then also probably you want to clean these posts using compressed air and then probably also if you can find either rubbing alcohol or a high quality alcohol like this you can wipe it down and uh, that may help out you may then have to apply some sort of a lubricant like this paste wax onto it after using the rubbing alcohol because the rubbing alcohol will take off all the lubricant I believe so th this is acting like a completely different router now um, the plunge base on this is as I said it's still hanging up ever so slightly and it seems to be when this boot kicks out to the side so th this is a newer router that was purchased at the end of December in 2024 and the older router here the plunge mechanism is more stiff but uh, it seems to be working well again as well and also if I let it go down here at the bottom it still holds its position now whereas when I started working on this today it would pop up about a quarter inch as soon as I release that lever and now it seems to be holding its position like it should be doing okay that's all for today thanks for watching bye